Traditionally, there are three pillars in the management of atrial fibrillation, anticoagulation, rate control, and rhythm control. But recent studies show that patients also benefit from the management of risk factors by addressing reversible conditions and lifestyle choices, erecting a fourth pillar. There are many risk factors for the development and progression of atrial fibrillation, including obesity, lack of physical activity, obstructive sleep apnea, diabetes, thyroid disease, high blood pressure, smoking, and the misuse of drugs and alcohol. But each of these conditions are considered reversible or modifiable and can be treated with medications or controlled with lifestyle changes like diet and exercise. As control over these conditions improves, symptoms of atrial fibrillation are likely to improve and episodes will likely occur less often. Currently, there are no guidelines for risk factor modification, but a multidisciplinary approach that combines conventional approaches with lifestyle changes should be considered part of atrial fibrillation management. Obesity is a big risk factor for atrial fibrillation. Promoting weight loss through healthy eating and aerobic exercise will help the patient lose weight gradually. This will improve their overall health and their atrial fibrillation. An initial goal of losing 10% of their body weight by doing 20 minutes of low-intensity exercise three times a week is a good place to start for patients with obesity. Weight loss through bariatric surgery has proven helpful for atrial fibrillation management. But be aware that rapid weight loss through extreme exercise or the use of weight loss medications can cause symptoms of atrial fibrillation to get worse. Weight loss and healthy eating will also help to reduce sleep apnea, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar. While lifestyle changes may positively affect conditions like diabetes and hypertension, Controlling blood sugar and blood pressure with medications can also be an effective way to manage atrial fibrillation. Both hyper- and hypothyroidism are also risk factors for atrial fibrillation, but controlling thyroid hormone levels with medication can help reduce symptoms and episodes. And of course, encouraging patients to stop smoking, drinking, or using recreational drugs or to seek lifestyle and behavioral counseling can help patients develop long-lasting habits to reduce the burden of atrial fibrillation. So be sure to add lifestyle interventions and addressing reversible conditions as effective tools in your atrial fibrillation management toolbox. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.